Welcome to another edition of DX Engineering Videos. We're here today at Contest University in downtown Dayton, Ohio, and uh, we're joined by a very special guest. It's Jerry Ellsworth, AI6TK. Hello, Jerry. Hi, thanks for having me. It's uh, great to have you here. Jerry, how did you uh, get started in your uh, kind of fascination with uh, computers and electronics? Oh my goodness, it was... Uh Ever since I was a little tiny kid, I just tore apart every toy my father ever um, bought me to the point where he stopped buying me toys and just brought home like, you know, broken electronics that he uh, found out and about. Wow. So, yeah. and how old were you when you were starting to tear stuff apart? Uh, probably when I figured out how to get into his tool chest and get screwdrivers. I was really fascinated with um, how things worked and I just hated if there was anything that seemed magical to me, I just needed to know wh how it worked inside. So, of course, everything came apart, including stuff that my father really didn't want me to take apart. Like, I had the VCR apart, which was an expensive thing in the 80s. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So, when did you first start soldering and things like that? Uh, now, that's an interesting story because I had learned about soldering and I wanted to do it, and I asked my father for a soldering iron, and he wouldn't give me one. So I found that I could take wire-wound resistors and hook it to a wall wart and plug it into the outlet, and it would get hot enough I could melt solder. And so that was my first soldering iron. I used that quite a bit until my father caught me one day doing that, and he's like, okay, fine, I'll get you a real soldering iron. So he got me one of those like janky uh, Radio Shack ones that right. burn up, and, right. but it was something. So, Jeez. pretty young, I, I don't know exact years, but probably like 10, 9, 10, or something like that, and, years old. And you started like laying out your own circuit boards, and you were doing discrete components, and then of course, mm -hmm. when surface mount came around, that was no big deal for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> surface mount's great, it's better than through hole parts. Right, you don't right. Have, don't have to drill any holes. Now, one of the things that sort of put you on the map was this game controller. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that. Well, leading up to the video game controller, I had um, ran a computer store, had gotten into doing electronics, and I taught myself quite a bit about electronics um, at a higher level at that point. And then there was a downturn in the uh, retail computer store mm -hmm. um, market. So I started going to Silicon Valley and tried to get um, jobs with no uh, formal education. And uh, it was a really, I had a real rough time doing that, and I was only getting like small gigs. But on the side, I had been reverse engineering the old Commodore 64 computer and sticking it onto these programmable gate arrays. And, you know, one by one, I was reverse engineering the different chips, like the sound chip and the video chip and stuff like that. And a toy company had somehow found out that I was doing this, and they wanted to make a toy, which was the entire Commodore 64 computer, which was a retro computer from the 80s that had a lot of great games. They want to put that into a joystick and then preload like 30 video games into it. And so they, they wrote to me and like, hey, can you make us a chip that does this? And of course I'm like, I just took a big gulp and said like, yeah, sure, no problem. And uh, so uh, we put a little team together, a couple programmers and myself, and uh, had never done a full chip design before. And so I just figured out how to do it in like record time, like eight months, we put the whole thing together. And, but the real magic of the project wasn't that somehow I bluffed my way through making a, a chip and it worked. It was that me and the programmers, we loved that computer because it was many of us, it was our first computer. Mm -hmm. And we put a bunch of different Easter eggs into it. So the programmers added some extra video games, like there was this kind of racy one where you know, a guy jumps off a cliff and you had to smash his head into the ground and, and do gory stuff. And they had pictures of themselves drinking beer with famous uh, uh, programmers. And, and I put uh, test points and special uh, pads on this so you could load your own games into it and hook keyboards and disk drives up to it. And uh, so we manufactured these things. I was over in China and we were doing the pilot run and I dropped into one of these secret menus that described how to take the toy apart or to get to these games and one of the executives was over there and he saw this and he freaked out he's like what is that what it? and I'm like oh we just added a few things and he's like explode he's like you can't tell anyone about this especially that game where you're like trying to smash your head open and uh, 
so forbid me to talk about it. And so um, came back to the States after the pilot run. I was talking to some of the guys and like, well, we're never going to work for this toy company again after that stunt. We might as well just tell the internet anyway. And so a friend of mine made this uh, uh, website and kind of backdated a bunch of blog posts that described like how to get into these secret menus. And supposedly it was a Chinese factory worker that likes to hack mm -hmm. on toys. And we leaked it to um, Slashdot, which was the hot website at mm -hmm. the time. And it went viral. And um, immediately the toy just sold out like overnight. And then it the was on a shopping channel and went nuts. Yeah, it was on a crazy place. We put, they put it onto uh, QVC, which right. um, I don't want to bore you guys with it, but long stories about how you target grandma on right. uh, on uh, QVC. It was like totally not the right market. But you sold thousands. Yeah, I, I can't remember how many. Like we produced a couple hundred thousand. I think seventy thousand sold like the first week or something like. But what was interesting is the Home Shopping Network called us and they were like, we don't understand. Like, we're only advertising this domestic, but over 50% of these are going to like foreign countries that we're not even marketing to. What's going on? And so, of course, these, the toy executives that were just like, rah, really mad at me, they're like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, Let's. you're good. <laughs> so, anyway, sorry, long story, but. Uh, Wow. Uh, that was uh, a viral hit before I knew what a viral hit was. So now you're in ham radio. Yeah. And, and you're, you're having a great time with that. I am. And you're here at Contest University, kind of. It's a fantastic event, by the way. Uh, like, first year, if I would have known about it before, I would have came sooner. Yeah. And, and you, you, you like all sorts of things in the hobby, you know, from, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from the digital stuff to building stuff to. I think you were grinding crystals here a few weeks ago. Yeah, also. yeah, I was sputter coating to change the frequency of crystals and stuff. So, so you're, you're the real MacGyver uh, of our time, so that's, right. that's really cool stuff. And, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to find you uh, uh, either later on in Hamvention or one of these times maybe you, you come around DX Engineering or we're out mm -hmm. towards the West Coast and we'll catch up on more of um, shenanigans. Jerry's shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, thanks very much for watching this edition of DX Engineering Videos.